What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. How y'all doing, ladies? Good to see you. Oh my gosh, so excited. I know, I know. So, do you notice anything different today? We've this not is like at the all. third time we've ever met in person. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, for those that follow us uh, religiously, uh, we normally do this through a Zoom, but we got a, a chief chat first. This is our first in-person live interview that we've had on the show. So not only is this our first in-person live chief chat that we had on, on, I mean, on the show, we get a rock and roll royalty with us today. So uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Yep, Chief, we have a military exclusive show for you tonight. Our guests have been rocking together since 1975, coming up on 46 years together. They've had huge hits and you know and love them. All Out of Love, Lost in Love, Every Woman in the World, and we are with them in a military exclusive right before they take the stage outside of Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, in Mesquite, at the Mesquite Arena. They're back on tour with the Lost in Love experience. Please help me welcome Air Supply, Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock to Chief Chad. Hey. Thank you. You can't talk that. <laughs> that was a lot of this stuff, right? <laughs> Well, Graham and Russell, thanks so much for taking time out to join us. And you guys know what to do. Everybody watching, let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions and your love and your favorite song in the comment section. We will read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party. And if you're not following our page, you should because we have more exclusive content coming up for you for Chief Chat. Absolutely. So Graham and Russell, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. Welcome. Pleasure, really great pleasure. I didn't know it was the first one. This is yeah, this is and it, it's gonna it's gonna feel like the first one too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thank you so much uh, for being with us today. And I just want to kind of start off. You know, the past year has been kind of crazy with the pandemic. Yeah. So how, how have you guys been faring during the pandemic? Well, obviously we've been affected uh, tremendously. We we didn't play for nearly a year, mm -hmm. um, and even when we re rescheduled for this year. Uh, the schedule changes every other day you know something's moved or cancelled or so we really don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next but we're out here now we played uh, three shows in january we're playing three this weekend and as the months move forward we hope to get out there and do our thing and, and be on the road you know every weekend and overseas and wherever we can go because it's our passion and it's what we live for and it's what i don't know to, how to do anything else absolutely so that's me and you uh, pretty much the same. You know, I've been writing a lot of songs and uh, getting back into my piano, getting my piano chops back up to snuff. <laughs> but I've enjoyed it. You know, I, I really have. Um, I've made great use of the time and uh, done things I, I don't normally do. You know, I'm a big gardener. Okay, so I uh, I created a big garden and, uh, you know, it's, it's quite surprising when people find out that I do that. They think I should be jetting off to the Bahamas or something. <laughs> so you got a lot of produce? Uh, in I do. I grow I grow all my own food, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. awesome. Except uh, Beyond Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Whopper Impossible or something like no, that. No, I don't, I don't eat any meat. So. Okay. Now, you guys typically play 130 live shows a year, and mm. I know you've performed more than 5,000 times on stage. So obviously the pandemic really hindered your ability to be with your fans. What does it mean to be back on the road um, in, with your fans again, live? You know, it's a great feeling again. And it's almost like when we first started, you know, when we didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> and when, you know, when we first began, or when any band begins, you can step on stage, and you don't know if you're gonna be received well, or you don't know what's gonna happen. It's kind of the same thing. But uh, uh, last night we played in Tulsa and uh, our fears were, uh, without foundation and everybody Aww. really went oh okay so it was nice but it is there is a lot of unknowns you know coming back again uh because it's unprecedented this time off for everyone in every profession so you never really know and as russell said you know we have uh, dates being knocked out every day and uh, but they'll all come back you know we've got to do what needs to be done and and that's really the beginning of the end of it you know we can only do what we can do and we, we're governed like everyone by the rules of COVID and what it does. Oh, yeah. and you've got to do your best you can, you know. Absolutely. 
And Graham and Russell, you guys have had nearly 46 years together. Congratulations on that mm -hmm. huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So take us back to 1975. Well, take some of us back to 1975. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think I, I think I was a tadpole. <laughs> Um, how did you guys meet and get started playing together? We in uh, met in a production of Jesus Christ Superstar oh, wow. in oh, Sydney. Uh, we met at rehearsals the first day, May the 12th, 1975. And uh, after having gotten into the show, we both discussed you know, our fears about getting into the show. And I hadn't been anything near music. Uh, I was 16, I used to play drums in a band for a little bit. But to be with 300 people that are waiting to audition for this world famous musical was extremely terrifying. In any case, uh, I auditioned three times and then finally they accepted me. Met Graham on May the 12th and my first recollection of, of Graham was uh, they were trying to teach us how to dance, which was impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so no TikTok. And I, saw, yeah, I <laughs> and, and I saw Graham uh, like an oak tree. He tripped and he went. <laughs> I twisted my ankle. And I said to myself, that's the last we're going to see this guy. Anyway, a few of us picked him up and iced his ankle for him. And uh, he recovered, obviously. And about two weeks later, I heard him playing guitar in the corridor of the theatre we were in. And I'd never heard anybody write a song before, original. I asked him what it was, and he said it was one of his songs. And I don't know the exact time, but spontaneously, we started to sing together. We thought this sounds pretty good. Mm. Yeah. So if Graham falls in the forest, do you, do you hear it? Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Well, you know, it's funny because when we look back on it now and we think about it often, uh, it was almost predestined to happen. You know, I mean, the uh, well, first of all, we were both born in June. We have the same name. We both love the Beatles and we both saw the Beatles when we were 14 in different parts of the world, you know, without knowing each other, of course. But uh, when in the, in the in the show, the apostles were paired together and they, they put us together for an unknown reason. Um, and so we and we sat next to each other in the in the boys chorus room. So we were talking all the time. It was it was virtually predestined that we meet yeah. and mm -hmm. there was another plan going on for us. You know, there really was. It definitely sounded like divine intervention. Uh, yeah, I, I, it yeah. was. And you know, when we needed a name, talking about divine intervention, uh, we didn't have a name, but we had our, our first record coming out. And our producer said, "We need you need to have a name by tomorrow morning. And that night, uh, well, we agreed that whoever had the, a name the next morning, we would go with it, you know, because we had to. And we met in the morning and I said to Ross, well, I had a dream last night and I dreamt of this big billboard and it was completely white and on the perimeter were all these flashing lights going on, right, erratic. And in the middle, in two words, in big black letters, it said, air supply. And I told him in the morning, I said, well, okay, we need to go with that. So it was, you know, kind of like divide intervention because we were in Superstar at the time. Oh, yeah. So we were surrounded by Jesus and the apostles <laughs> and, uh, and everyone for almost two years. And uh, so that was in our consciousness, you know. Oh, that's awesome, awesome story. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, Y'all been together a little bit over 40, 45 years, mm. over 5,000 plus shows. And I'm hearing that y'all never had an argument or never had a, uh, a fallen out. And so right. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, uh, lifelong friends and married couples out there want to know what the secret is to, to, right. to not. Well, it. our secret is we never got married. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we have very distinct roles within within the Esquire. Like Graham writes all the songs. I can't write songs, never could, and I don't have that desire. I love his songs, I'd sing anything that he wrote or he writes. Um, you know, I'm not bragging, I'm the singer and he's the songwriter. So we don't step on each other's toes. Um, it's a democracy, we, we discuss everything, every big decision. But we, we found there was no reason to fight, you know. Plus we got in, into air supply when we, we weren't teenagers. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we're kind of, Ad sure. adults to a degree hmm. and um, there's just no reason to fight i mean we have a, we have the greatest life we have the greatest fans we've been all over the world um we, we respect each other and we trust each other so awesome hmm. 
That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. Right. That's it. <laughs> so, so secret is don't get back. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I can't say that. So love is a big theme for you. Mm. Uh, lost in love, all out of love, mm. making love out of nothing at all. Yeah. Where where do these love songs come from? What inspires them? Well, you know, I really don't know, to be quite honest. <laughs> you know, people ask me that and they and they ask me, they say, Well, how do you write a song? I really don't know because it just happens. But in our early years, well, I was writing songs. I started writing songs when I was 12 years old and they were all very romantic songs and I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and really still don't, but it just happens all the time. But we never, we never chose love as our uh, theme. We didn't say, okay, let's record, write and record love songs. We never ever did that. Uh, and in fact, it was later in our career when we, we realized that, oh wow, a lot of these songs are big epic ballads. Uh, and people used to come to us and say, well, why don't you change your sound? Why don't you do something else? And we said, uh, we can't <laughs> because uh, we don't, first of all, we don't follow any trends. You know, we've created our own sound uh, by default, not by design. We, we never sit down and say, let's try and do this or let's try and do that. Even in the studio, especially in the early years, we would never say, oh, let's have a big orchestra on this. It, it, a song would just dictate that and it would just be what it is, you know. Like when we were recording All Out of Love, for instance, uh, you know, it, in those days especially, uh, all the songs would go to Russell first and, and you know, it would be his choice. And, uh, and he was going to sing the verses, the whole thing on All Out of Love. But it, I think it was you and, and Harry, our producer, he said, now get let yeah. let let and you let the tall guy have a shot. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, you know it really was too high for me, um, and I and I thought no, it's too high for me. And the and the producers and you said, oh, no, go go and sing it, and they said that's it, that's the thing, you got to sing it. So so I sang the verse and Russell sang the chorus. But there's no formula or anything. It's just it's just a reflection of who we are, and and I think that has a lot to do with our longevity, because we're not pretending to do anything or to do pretending to do something that we don't feel it's like it's all organic you know what i mean uh yes. we're not trying to do something that we're not cut out to do so we're really following our, our life's path i mean this has become our life certainly uh, and it's been incredible but you know all those years ago, if somebody has said, you, you, you two are going to be in a rock and roll band for 46 years, we would have said that it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so the impossible does happen. Awesome. And, and, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, it's like, it, and it seems like Russell just has like complete trust in whatever you're writing. You know, Absolutely. It, it yeah. is, yeah. It, it, that, that really is. Uh, and, and we have that trust, you know. Uh, you know, when I have a I usually go in the studio with about 20 songs and Russell knows that they're going to be okay. And I know that Russell's going to be able to sing them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we go in, but when we're uh, uh, at home, you know, and we live along, I live in Utah, Russell lives in California. We don't keep in constant touch all the time. You know, we don't need to do that. Uh, but you know, like now we're coming out on the road, so we call each other and, and we, make sure we're all both in a great space, you know. Absolutely. So it's, it's an interesting uh, dynamic, but it's something that's evolved over decades, absolutely, you know. Absolutely. So we couldn't change it now if we wanted to. <laughs> and it's magic, it is pure magic. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Well, I don't think that the airheads want you to change it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I say airheads. Lovingly. Yeah. Yes. They're very <laughs> proud of that. As yes. we do. <laughs> and they're, they're legion, you know. Absolutely. Oh, you know what a legion is. Yeah. I raise my right hand. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you have a new album out, right? The Lost in Love Experience. Mm. Uh, it was recorded with the Prague Symphony. So yeah. what can you tell us about that album? Well, we were in Las Vegas and a, a friend of ours was there and he'd just done some work with the Prague Symphony and he said, yeah, they were fantastic. And I've heard of them for maybe 10 years, the Prague Symphony. They're one of the most famous orchestras, certainly in Europe, maybe in the world. And uh, 
he said, you should work with them sometime. And I said, I would, I would work them in their heartbeat, you know. And he said, well, let, let me talk to them and see if they have an opening. And they had an opening about four months down the line. And, uh, and we got in touch with them and they said, yeah, let, let's do it. So we just, it was as simple as that, we did it. But it was quite amazing, you know. The thing is, our, our music is very, it's meant to be with an orchestra, yeah. you know. A, lo a, lot of, a lot of music, certainly modern music, is out of place with an orchestra, but our music is quite different. And I like to think classic and timeless. So it's beautiful with an orchestra. And, you know, it was just breathtaking. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do a big orchestrated album like that. And the orchestra was like 50 piece. Oh, wow. And, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was, it was one of those moments, you know, uh, when you hear them all tuning up, it's, it's like you go, oh, you get goosebumps. Mm. And oh, then yeah. they start playing and it's like, wow, here we go. Huh? But it's a, you know, we're very proud of that, of that record. It's a, it's kind of like a milestone for us, you know. Sure. Yeah. Will what? you be sharing any of the new music tonight? Pardon? Will you be sharing any of that new music tonight? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. We'll be playing a lot, a lot of that. Yeah, well, speaking of milestones, last year y'all were named the top five Aussie bands of all time. So that's kind of goat status is what we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys reached goat status. So, so what does that mean to you? It means a lot because uh, in our early days in Australia, it was very hard for us. It was all hardcore rock and roll, only in pubs and clubs. Uh, a lot of drinking, a lot of rowdy oh, yeah. people, and uh, we weren't that, certainly. You know, we'd show up in our white pants and a white shirt with a fluffy thing around the neck and <laughs> <laughs> sing love songs. It was quite, quite an experience, and it really toughened you up pretty quick. Um, but we were lucky. We had a, a hit. Our first uh, recording in Australia was a number one single, and, and the album went straight to the top. So that was a, a big boost for us. Um, you know, and we just did our thing, as Graham said. I mean, we would drive. I remember driving from Sydney to Adelaide, which is two thousand miles, I think, and playing the same day we got in. We had wow. a, a Volkswagen van and oh, no. <laughs> the band and the equipment in the van in the van with us. So, you know, we've certainly paid our dues, um, and that experience and being in Superstar together too was a, a big influence because it taught us discipline, punctual, punctuality. Uh, being in the right place at the right time on stage. Uh, ev everything that you could ask for as, as an education happened. And of course, we, we toured with Rod Stewart in 1977. And that was another a big education for us. We watched every show. We, I think we did 60 shows with him. Mm. Wow. And we, wow. we just set, um, stood side stage and watched him perform, watched him interact with the audience, how to control the crowd, mm -hmm. uh, lighting production, business end of it. The whole thing. So we we had uh, quite an education in the in the two years of, from when we started working together. Mm. It was almost like we the universe again uh, was prepping us for something, because when we left Super, when we left Superstar, we really hadn't done anything. You know, uh, we just had that uh, Superstar experience. But when we formed the band, uh, you know, we hadn't played a show and and we had this hit, a hit record, and so we put the band together. And uh, I think it was our third or fourth show. We played to uh, 70,000 people in, uh, at the Opera House on a, a New Year's Eve show in, in Sydney. So we were kind of thrown to the wolves really early. Yeah. And then Rod Stewart happened. And then we, had, we've, we've, we tried to figure all that out, what was going on. And you've got to remember, uh, Rod Stewart was the biggest act in the world. Oh, yeah. And we were, <laughs> we were the most unknown act in the world. <laughs> we were the least known. Nobody knew who we were outside of Australia, you know, so we had to learn pretty fast uh, and we did. And we took, because we weren't teenagers, like Russell said, we took that opportunity as a real opportunity, you know, and uh, wow, we've been given a chance here to go to a university oh, of, yeah, of music, yeah. you know, the school of rock, if you like. <laughs> and, and so we learned and we watched and we listened and, uh, and it was a great experience for us. So by the time we did hap uh, happen on a worldwide level in 1980, we were we were ready for it, and we were had some uh, inkling of what might happen if we were to become successful, which we did, you know, uh, pretty fast. Um, and it, you know, we had all those hits in a row, 
And it was kind of bizarre for us because we were very, very new to the, to the game. So, but all those experiences in Superstar and with Rod really defined who we are. Um, we were very, always very level headed, weren't we? Yeah. We were never, uh, we never got crazy or did any of that be because we were really focused on, on being successful, you know, and, and we were, you never saw, and we suffered for that too, though. Yeah. You never saw us in the papers, in People magazine, um, and doing all that. And we kind of suffered a little because the critics would say, oh, here they come again, you know, <laughs> here's, an, here's another uh, big ballad. Yeah. But uh, the, the thing, the thing is, they didn't realize that people would still be listening to those songs 40 years later, Absolutely. which they are. So we kind of, are having the last laugh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <absolutely>. you know. <laughs> you are um, enduring indeed, and not only does Australia love you, but America loves you too. They do. Yes. Yes. We have the military community watching from all over the world Ooh. right now. All Soldiers, well. airmen, guardians, veterans, military families. What words of hope and encouragement do you have for our troops tonight? Well, it's really kind of the other way around. I mean, you guys give us hope. Um, America's an awesome place to live. I love it to death. Um, Without your support, we wouldn't even be doing this. Mm. Um, we're very optimistic people, and for the last couple of years, especially health-wise with this pandemic, uh, it's been very trying on everybody. So I always uh, hope that you know this will be eradicated pretty soon, and that people can get back to living a normal life. Because I think that the uh, and it had to happen. Kids not being able to go to school is a is a horrible thing because they can't socialise with their friends. Who knows what, if they're working at all? You oh, know, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. My, my kids are not working. Okay, you know. They're not going to school from home. They're, just, they're supposed yeah. to, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, and it's not a corny thing. I mean, if, if everybody just could unite for one, one year, one month, all with the same focus and with the same objects uh, to, to mm. cherish, I think it would be a, a much better place. Yeah. F funnily enough, you know, something we've done for years, and we do it at every show, the last thing we do before we leave the States, we salute all the uh, veterans and active military uh, around the world, what we sort of said, we do it every night. And it's amazing how many people, and, and we ask them to stand up, you know, and they, there's so many people, they, they stand up. And it's a great moment, a, a real, and I get goosebumps, you know, and it's such a proud moment to see them doing that. It's just quite amazing. Absolutely. Now, we appreciate you because um, the, the music that you, is timeless. And, and, mm. and it, it, you know, music transcends in so many forms and fashion. And for you guys to, uh, you know, put that out for the world to consume, uh, it, it, it has a, a positive effect on us. So thank you. That's incredible. Yeah. Now, does this, does this go all over the world to all the... Troops yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You got it. Yep. How, how many? This may be a, <laughs> a, a secret question. <laughs> but how many troops do you think are, are deployed around the world now? Not in the US, but around different Ooh. countries. Oh my gosh, that's a really good question. That is a good I'll question. I'll leave it to the airman to answer. <laughs> Ooh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's Joe Biden here. Yeah. He says, you can't answer that question. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. I'd be, I'd be speculating. Yeah, yeah, uh, it must be an incredible yeah, number. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Sure. They're, they're all over the world. So if you're tuning in and you're deployed, thanks for watching. Yes, yes, thank yeah. you for your service thank deployment. You. Yes, uh, thank you. So we just want to pause for a second and turn to the live feed and read you some of the comments from people yeah, who right, are watching. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline says, hi from Puerto Rico. We love air supply. When are you coming back here? She wants to know. <laughs> Well, I have to say, as soon as we can, <laughs> uh, we've been there many times. So fingers crossed we can make it again soon when this stuff clears up. Hopefully so. So stay tuned, Jacqueline. Um, Tanya White says, we will see you tomorrow night in Houston. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Jerry says, are you coming to Indianapolis? I haven't not, seen that on the books yet. I haven't seen it yet, not but we yet, we but will be coming there. Stay tuned. Anne says hello from Florida, oh. um, upstate New York. That's Papa Trot. Papa Trot. I got a story. About, I got a story after you guys read this. <laughs> no, I can tell about right now. So Papa Trot. <laughs> Papa Trot. Uh, he saw that. He saw you all, and he's a good friend of mine. He's a. Me and him went to Chief Leadership School together. Oh. oh. Uh, and so 
uh, he said he saw you guys at Catskills, New York, uh, a few years ago. Okay. And he said him and his wife walked in while y'all were performing. He said y'all stopped the music and said, "Welcome." Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be right. In the middle of the set. Was that? Uh, I wonder if that was that the, the holiday cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, Kutches. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure which one, but he said it in Catskills. He said, you, you guys stop the show. You're welcome to his wife yeah. at the center of the front. He said he ended up having a couple of drinks with you after. after yeah, the yeah. Season, so. We used to we used to play. I think it's gone now, but if it's the place I'm thinking of, it's a place called Kutcher's and it's like a holiday camp and and people go there. It's a it's a, been around for generations and people go there every year, you know, and and we we've, we've played there several times and it's it's a really trippy place oh, we gotcha. really enjoy it but all meals are at certain times and you have your table you know gotcha. and yes. and we would walk in for lunch and they'd be like, oh <laughs> 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 and they you know they serve your your meals and it's really cool big family thing yes oh. Very it's wonderful. Place. Place. That is a good place. That's I don't want to go. <laughs> so you are you're getting so much um, love on Facebook, Julie. Is there anything for Chiefs page? There is. So we're also cross posting to a Chiefs Facebook page, and so Amanda May says, "Please tell them making love out of nothing at all is one of my favorites, and that they're amazing." And Amanda May is an amazing singer too. She can sing everything. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. JC McDuffie says, oh my, Shane McDuffie is one of your biggest fans. We came to see you at the Hard Rock Cafe every year. And I got a story um, for that one too. Oh, uh, yeah. oh so, so, wow. Uh, uh, Shane McDuffie and uh, Joanne Griggs. So Joanne Griggs, is, she saw the promo and she sent me a message. She's like, I went to an air supply concert in Biloxi and she said that uh, one of your shoes were untied. So oh, she yeah. said she tied your shoe. Oh, really? During, while you were playing live, and you guys gave it a thumbs up, and I kept going. <laughs> that is a gumption right there. Right, like, yeah, don't me. She'll never wash her thumb again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let us so, know if so you So, Joanne, thank you for, for tying the shoe, because we don't want Graham to fall over again. <laughs> right. Well, you know, my, because it does happen a lot, but, um, my guitar tech has to keep his eye on my legs because if I trip on it, I'm going to fall over. You know, I got my guitar, on. so he's always kind of watching to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. But often he has to run on stage, and I'll put my foot out. Because <laughs> yeah. I got to keep playing. You know, yeah, you should buy a pair of boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Some vel Velcro or something. <laughs> So uh, can you tell us what's ahead for Air Supply? I know you guys are about to rock out uh, tonight, but you got anything coming up in the, in the hop? We, we've actually never had a plan. You know, we, okay. we just do what we feel like doing. Um, and as I said uh, at the opening of this, dates change every day. We, our yeah. manager came out yesterday to see us with a new schedule. And by the time the show was over, it wasn't the new schedule anymore. Uh -huh. But we plan on touring as much as we can until we can't do it anymore. Um, and when we feel like making another record at the order of the captain here, <laughs> oh, right. we'll, we'll, we'll do I'm the lieutenant. Oh, that's good. Um, but look, like I said, we just we love what we do, and we're in a position where we can kind of choose what we want to do. But uh, playing live has always been our thing, so we oh, yeah. want to concentrate on that. I think. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. Uh, it's it's such an unknown time right now, as you know. So we're not making too too many plans we just want to get out and play again mm -hmm. because that's what we what we love to do and uh, that's what really drives us keeps us young you know so we're hoping that things start opening up by august we're hoping to be out you know, maybe not full tilt but pretty close to it but we have a lot of dates planned we're going to uh, asia a big asian tour in november and december so We'll be back over there. I, w I wonder if there are people in, in that area of the world that are watching. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure there are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Okinawa or Korea or a lot of. Oh, US Okinawa. Oh, there. I have a story for We played in Okinawa maybe 15 years ago. And, we, you know, everybody was really excited. The, the, the camp was packed, obviously. And uh, we had a great sound check. And it was about, about two hours before we were going to play. And the sirens went off, and I don't know if it was a, oh, but all the planes went up. Oh, they, oh, yeah. I don't know what it was. They wouldn't tell us, uh, but I don't know if it was a, uh, what, not a test. What do you call it? A drill, or if it was for real. But it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, it looked like it was for real. We were asking people, "What's going on?" Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they knew what was going on. Yeah, exactly. But all the planes went up. Oh wow! And we couldn't play. Oh, but we couldn't play that day. We had to. We stayed an extra day and played the next day. But it was pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'd uh, I'd never been on a 
a, a base like that before. And I, I was really shocked when we went in because you are, they had pizza uh, and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. everything. And in the, did you go in the big department store? They have department stores. I don't recall. So that, yep, that, that, that's, that's us, yep. the exchange. Of the oh, that's the exchange. Stores. Wow, it was yeah. amazing. I mean, they had every, <laughs> it was <laughs> like they picked a piece of America up and put it down in Okinawa. Man, just, that's, our, that's, our, that's our slogan. Oh, really? Oh, man. <laughs> yes, yes. We, we go where you go, and we bring a piece of, piece of home to wherever you're at in the oh, world. Oh, well, that's... Wow. Man, you, we need to get you a shirt. Yeah. Where's, yeah. Where's, yeah. Let's, let's so get no a job. No matter where you are, you can have an American Coca-Cola no matter where you're at. Or a piece of pizza or yes. a, a taste at home, for sure. Yeah. And you got, you clearly picked up on that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I had no idea it was like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But it was amazing, yeah. Really cool. So given that things are in flux, where can your fans go to keep up with you and um, get the latest and greatest on what you guys are doing? Uh, well, we have a Facebook page and there are several million followers on that. But airsupplymusic.com is where they find out all the gossip. <laughs> <laughs> From Russell. <laughs> 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 He's gone red. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's applymusic.com on our Facebook page. Yeah. Awesome. And we keep a very uh, constant presence with our fans. They're, they're the best in the world. You know, they're just, they're super. They, they really care about us and they're. Uh, Ask, they're always asking us questions, and we do a lot of meet and meet and greets with them. You know, it's quite quite cool. Yeah. So that's awesome. You were. I think we did. We get an answer for for the. We did. Uh, the oh, performance. I think somebody. Please scroll. I, I thought I saw 160k. Is what? Yeah, oh, more than oh, 160, yeah, 160,000. That's a lot of people, isn't it? Stationed yeah, yes. outside of the United States. Wow! Wow! It's a yeah. lot of people. Absolutely. So, man, we are definitely appreciate your time. Thank this you. An awesome yeah. interview. But before we wrap up, uh, and, and you kind of, kind of, you kind of told us about at the end of your shows, you have the military got folks stand up. Right? We do. We ask them to stand. Absolutely. Yeah. So, when you ask them to stand this time, I, I'm gonna need you to coin check them. So, are y'all familiar with the military challenge coin? No. I, I am. Yes. I'm You're okay. A little bit. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the one with the big brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, where, no, we 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 heard about where does that come from? We've been given a bunch. Oh, those, yeah, we have. Yeah, yes, yeah. We have those. So you know what you, you know what you're supposed to do with them, right? So, I don't. So if you if you go ever go to an uh, to a bar and there's a bunch of military folks in there, if you drop your coin on the table, whoever does not have a coin, they got to buy the rounds of drinks. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. So so this may work for you tonight. <laughs> for all your veterans that you have stand up, which I I definitely appreciate. But uh, I want to give both of you all a, a coin. Oh. It's a token of my appreciation for being on the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Chief. So Absolutely. normally it's a handshake, but so we are safe and secure here with COVID protocols. Chief is not going to yes, handshake. Yes, we will, we, will, we, will handle, we will handle that after the show. But I just <laughs> oh, want to make okay. sure that you guys know that, that uh, I appreciate you for, for, oh, you're for taking kind. some time to come over here and, and talk to us and our viewers. Yeah, I appreciate pleasure. That. It's our pleasure. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank and you like, so much for the invitation. Absolutely. And like I said before, your music is timeless and, and, and the things and the focus is love, right, on a lot of your music, but that's exactly what we need right, right now. Because yeah. we've been going through a whole bunch of stuff yeah, in the we past, have. Yeah. past uh, few years. So, I agree. That, uh, yeah. Love is, needs to be the focus anyway. Yeah. And yeah. we definitely appreciate what you guys do. Thank uh, you this means much. so much to all the veterans and family members and service members out there, all 160,000 outside the country. Right. And, Hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> be safe. And, and everything else. But uh, we definitely appreciate you. And thank you for uh, taking time to spend with us. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Chief out. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Cool. Oh, this yeah. time.